uh, as we start. Okay, and, and also folks, you should know that uh, Etzion gave a meeting on um, Carrie Ben Shammai, uh, which we have recorded. He gave her whole life. So he spent a great deal of time with Carrie uh, and, and she was, uh, he, 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 he was her right-hand man, would you say? He's, she was his Baba contact. And she, Carrie was the only one from Israel who came and met Baba. Uh, in the so I will find that link and put it in the chat. Um, it's a great, it's a, it was a great program that we had with Etsy on. Um, and so I think at this point, I'll just, uh, okay, let me tell you just a little bit about Etsy on, um, introducing you for those who might not know him. He, uh, he, he, uh, would you like to? Would you mind to wait a couple of minutes? Because a few people told me that they might uh, participate. Oh, I'm happy to. Okay, okay. We decided to make it uh, 17, uh, seven, uh, 19, excuse me. So just wait a minute or two. We can chat I'm about this. And that. That. Okay, well, yeah, we can make, we can wait a few minutes. Just uh, for the sake, uh, and uh, in a minute, sharply get it started. I see two people I have just joined right now, Etzion. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to wait a minute and two after? We can do that. Yeah. Too. No, we'll wait. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll wait till. Ah, oh, here is Lutfi. Lutfi. <laughs> <laughs> our. Uh, <laughs> Lutfi is our uh, Egyptian representative as well. And, uh, your your first interaction with Mara was, Mara was pretty. Uh, uh, Astounding! I hope you tell that story. You know, about? Do you remember? You know the story I'm talking about. When Mara came out to you, and you were you were not. Uh, yeah. she, 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 she told me to take Baba <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you want me to narrate it again? Yeah. Why, yeah. Yeah. Let's do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yeah. Sure. I love you to talk about Mara. Yeah. Can make a, a Mara evening as far as I'm concerned. Wonderful. <laughs> well, I, I wrote a special skit for Mayra. I guess we, we read it at that time. You know my Baba stories. I wrote stories for Baba. These stories I wrote for Baba, not for not for people. For to, just to make him, uh, I felt, uh, to entertain all these headaches and troubles he has to run, all these universes, and everybody's complaining. I, I was writing skits. Whole universe went on a strike because it didn't have enough sugar for the tea, and, and then another universe is making a strike because of this, and, uh, and he has to manage all this. You know, I made fun for all this. And I felt the, so these stories, I was reading it to him, and I felt that he, he was, uh, had a good time uh, from all these uh, shticks, because you know what is a shtick. You know, this, it's a gag, you know, it's Yiddish for a shtick, you know, how can you explain? This is making people fun, stupid nonsense. <laughs> but you know, but I'll tell you what is real with, with these stories. These stories are real. Why is it real? Because it made Baba laugh. Whatever makes Baba laugh is real. Whatever makes him cry and sad, it's not real. That's black and white. It can make a decide that how simple uh, this world can be. <laughs> That's my experience. <laughs> This is the story now about when you didn't take darshan. When you when you first got there, when you first got there with Carrie, you weren't so sure about Baba. He was uh, people bowing down at the chair. No, That's I was not. Uh, no, I, I was not sure about Baba. I was sure, sure enough. Nineteen seventy one two, he came at, at Carrie's uh, room. I looked at his picture. A picture is uh, with me, the uh, same original picture. I looked at the picture and he gave, gave me Baba realization and you who is, the eyes of the eye, whatever, whatever words you... <clears throat> I, I knew much more than what he is saying about himself and what was said about him at this instant. So 72, of course I knew he, who he is and why should I waste my time? When there's somebody, if I wouldn't have this experience, how can I tell? Because I didn't read any. I didn't come to him because I read books and I was convinced. 
or Kerry told me stories and I was convinced. He gave me, he decided. And he gave it the full, uh, the full spectrum of, of the experience a human being can uh, uh, take without dropping the body. If it would, if it would be more than one split of a second, I would evaporate from the intensity and the radiance. It was unbelievable. So I'm coming to Mirabad, and still I remain the same guy. Till now. <laughs> Nothing has changed since then. Same human being. Didn't become enlightened, and be, didn't become a spiritual advance. The same uh, person. But uh, <clears throat> so I'm coming to Mirazad, I'm a city. We became, uh, this is Baba's home, okay? So we entered Baba's home, and uh, you could sit there and look and uh, enjoy your time. And uh, I saw people uh, bowing to the chair. Everybody is coming inside, <clears throat> lying on the ground, putting their uh, faces into the pillow next to Baba's uh, bed where he dropped his body. And I'm sitting in the corner, and looking at this uh, spectacle, bizarre spectacle. And for me, it was very strange. I have never seen such a thing. First time in India. You know, in India, it's, it's uh, it's very, it's, it's a common thing to go to the saints and bow to them and kiss the sandals and uh, uh, whatever there is. <clears throat> and then May, of, all of a sudden, Mera's door opened and she stormed straight to me, you know. The, she went to the, this, the, from her door straight, I was on the, exactly the other corner <clears throat> in front of her door, went to me direct. Why don't you take Baba's touch? And of course, why? Why did she know there were more people sitting there, and this just the one guy sitting there? Well, what there is about this, especially about this guy, that she come, she was enlightened. She knew what's going on. And, uh, Baba told her, who knows what what spiritual state they are? Was it? She, she didn't reveal it so, so much to us, but she was. She knew things. That human skin of it. She was uh, the closest thing to Baba. No? He will add anything to it. <laughs> so then, did you so, take Sarasan? Did you bow down? Right away, ma. Didn't we wait a second? <laughs> I knew she. I knew she is the queen of the universe without reading anything. I knew. <laughs> I knew everything. I knew what I needed to know. I was. <clears throat> Praying to Baba during the 70s, if he'll permit me to see his mayor. What I am is a male human being will uh, ask to see such as a pure soul in the universe. How did I know all this uh, without reading anything? Well, maybe I read a little bit here and there with my humble English. Uh, but it, it was all because he gave it, not because uh, I was. He gave it. And uh, it carried. Uh, Yes. Can I tell you, 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 we are hearing your papers rustling. It must be near the microphone Sorry. or something. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, I moved something. Sorry. I'm actually outside in the garden. So you wanted to read my bio and then we'll see how uh, to that. Okay. Yeah. Etienne uh, uh, was, he was born in May 1948. His parents, uh, escaped Eastern Europe in 1934. He said all who remained, almost all who remained there perished of the Jewish people. Uh, he spent time in the Israeli army and uh, in the police force in uh, Jerusalem and Bethlehem, <laughs> Bethlehem. yeah. Bethlehem. And Jesus was born, yeah. was uh, born, uh, supposedly. Yeah. In the, during seventy two, he he uh, he uh, was part of the uh, Rudolf Steiner group, and that and they referred him to Carrie as uh, uh, and they they sent her to see Carrie, uh, uh, meet her. <clears throat> One of them told me to go and meet, visit a woman in Jerusalem because I was uh, living in Jerusalem at the time. Yeah. You should tell this story. Do you <laughs> you want to tell your story? <laughs> I'm reading. Yeah. Okay, okay. There's just a few lines and uh, I can elaborate it. So. All right, all right. He, he said, at her modest home, I saw Mayor Baba's face at the first time 
And in an instant, he made me Baba realized. So this is 72. Uh, and she, Carrie asked him to take her to Maribod during at 79. And since then, he has visited Maribod uh, many times, also Europe and in the U.S. And uh, he says in 73, he participated in, I guess, fighting in the war between Israel, Syria, and Egypt. So you've had a lot of experience in <clears throat> Yeah, I can speak about uh, at that time, during that war, Baba started to give me, uh, to teach me the purpose of war in his uh, manifestation. I can talk about this with a problem of sanskars. And is the this... The sanskars. Sorry? Is this the time when the uh, the Israelis stole the... the, uh, the... Yeah, no, they did it. In sixty nine, and this is seventy three. Okay, they <clears throat> basically took the. Uh, I was I was interested in what. How would would you describe what happened there? They took the armaments. Or they they were learning some new kind radar, of radar radar radar. You know a radar. You yeah. can uh, detect uh, flying uh, objects mm -hmm. from far away. You can uh, detect if if these are aircrafts and. Uh, what to do with them, and then uh, the, with, with the radar, you can uh, direct the missiles to hit the warplanes of Israel. We suffered heavy casualties later on in 1973, in spite of all this. Okay. But, but Baba started to give me, <clears throat> I received very strong insights during that war by concerning the, the, the war, concerning the problem of war, concerning Israel, concerning the role of Israel, etc. Some of the things I will discuss, and some of the things, naturally, I think I cannot say anything. Okay. But uh, Baba hinted at a few things during his talks over the years. So I can relate here and there. I'll build a, a coherent, a cohesive picture of the, whatever I can, it depends on the audience, which yeah. direction you want to go. Yeah, and Etienne encourages questions. Uh, you should just let the yes. audience know. Um, uh, in 1980, he uh, took the leadership of the Jerusalem Mayor Baba Center from Kerry. Kerry was the leader. Uh, him. And he passed in 1890, uh, 1986. Uh, and since then, he is uh, has pub translated Baba books into Hebrew. He has a Hebrew, he has a publishing, uh, he's published many of Baba's books in Hebrew. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that and you can take it from there, Etienne. Oh, well, uh, Etienne, will you please show the picture, Baba's picture that you saw, the first picture? <clears throat> I may, I can bring it. Oh, you um, don't have to. Okay. I no, love it. I, I mean, I'm sitting in the garden. I have to go. I can bring it. It'll take a few seconds. You want it? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see. So, you have to wait a few seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we talk to among ourselves here. <laughs> now, that, that mare rushing through the door write to him and said, why don't you take Darshan? And he went, immediately took it. Wow, what a beautiful gift. Oh my Lord, wow. I really recommend uh, seeing the uh, Carrie Benjamin uh, video. Yeah. He, he was her person. He really, Baba kind of gave him to her to in her older years, he he took good care of her. To, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> there it is. Ah, okay. Ah, beautiful. This was Carrie's. That's young. This was Carrie's photo. Oh, he doesn't have his earphones on. That that's the photo he saw when he yeah, had this, the barber reel. There were many photos. Oh, 
But yeah. this was uh, the one I looked, yeah. and from his forehead something came, some force. I cannot explain what happened actually. Wow. <clears throat> he totally zapped my brains, and the 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 mental situation I was at, uh, <clears throat> at that moment. Moment before that, everything was black. Everything was dark. Terrible world. Everything is ugly. I look at the people that didn't like the world. I didn't want to participate in this world. I didn't want to do anything. I was just uh, I was doing my chores. I was uh, good at work. <clears throat> at that time, I was uh, in uh, serving in the army. I served as a, in communications in a tank brigade. Later on, in a tank brigade in the Six Day War, we. We really, what we did to the Egyptians at that time was unbelievable. I was inside the midst of the whole thing. And then uh, after that, I went to, after my army service, after three years, I went to, uh, didn't know what to do with myself. One of my friends suggested that we we'll join the police force in communications. And I spent those three and a half years two and a half years in the city of Bethlehem where Jesus was born. And uh, this play, we played a role on, on the way I, I came to Baba. Because I, for whatever it is, it's a long story, I came to know the people of uh, the Rudolf Steiner group in Tel Aviv. I was living in Jerusalem. Every, every week I would, would go there to the meetings. The meetings were uh, held by somebody whom I think was very advanced soul, exceptional human being. And uh, one of his, uh, after six months, one of the people who were attending there who helped me to understand because understanding uh, the philosophy of Uldo Steiner is, is very hard. And then he said, he would, uh, the guy, one of the people that explained to me what's, what's happening, what is it, all these uh, theories. And then one day he looked at me and said, I think there is a woman in Jerusalem you should meet. And he gave me the telephone number of Kerry Ben Shammai. I came to her, came to her house, uh, entered a little bubble room. I looked at this picture and immediately I became, uh, my child mental state was transformed in an instant from total black to total Total, uh, it was a total 180% shift in a second. No psychiatrist, no, you know, nobody can do such a thing. Only God can do such a thing. To take somebody who is in the lowest ebb of uh, humanity, of uh, helplessness and hopelessness. I, in, later, I, I felt as if I was a, a fish. So somebody took it out of the water and put it on hot sand. And you don't know that your fish, you don't know out of the water, you don't felt terrible. And then a second later, a second before that, I didn't want to do any to con contribute anything for humanity. A second later, I want to do everything for humanity. Just, just like this. It flipped the whole thing in, in a second. And for six hours, I got out of her apartment. I walked in the street and I was completely stunned. These are not human beings, these are angels. I saw only angels. I saw everything was angelic. Everything was beautiful and perfect. There was no evil whatsoever in the whole world. It, it lasted for six months. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I remember it like today. It, it never happened there after that, of course. It, it came only at that time. And when I, I started, I, I calmed down after a while. And a strong sound crossed my mind very clear, you received something very great, but it's not only for you, it's for the world. I didn't understand what was in it, but for me, for the world. And uh, later on again, another uh, message came, <clears throat> don't get a big head, I can do it to a stone. If I want to wake up a stone, <laughs> I can wake up a stone. <laughs> that was the mes <laughs> second message. And then after three weeks, it was so overwhelming and uh, the experience, uh, Face, standing face to face with such an incredible uh, divine being. 
And I didn't believe in God, you know, anything, you know, it was complete, uh, blank, complete void. Somebody came with a total void that didn't come from, uh, I wasn't religious, I wasn't spiritual. I didn't do anything. I didn't do, I didn't do an ex exercise. It just happened. I didn't know anything to earn. It just happened. And uh, three weeks later, I surrendered to him. And the nature of this surrenderance, for me, I didn't know how to surrender. For, for me, how did it come to me? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no answer. But this nature of surrenderance was without any self-interest. I didn't ask for anything. I just uh, wanted uh, to share his uh, work, uh, to do something for him. It was something uh, very simple. I felt like a, a child before the mother. How can I help a mother? Or something like this. And due to this, surrenders, uh, things started to work in a very quick succession. And then he gave me the first experience of uh, wiping out of sanskars. Of course, I had no idea what, uh, what sanskars are. <clears throat> now, the background for this uh, little story is that I was in the army. The army was uh, quite a mid-house. Our training was uh, <clears throat> like the German or the British. Uh, they, they, they would make the lives, the lives of the regular soldiers uh, like hell in order to train for the real hell because we, every few weeks we would go for some action. And uh, when you go to the action, there are the people uh, you get killed, get, uh, get killed, you kill, you get killed, you know, all these things. Uh, we, we, are, we were just boys and they threw you into all this uh, terrible situation. And uh, we had to cope with this. So in order to persevere, you, they gave us uh, a very, very tough uh, training, mainly mentally. So we can endure the hardships of uh, the real world. So made us our life, lives miserable on purpose. They're doing it as a strategy, strategy in uh, all the armies. If you saw the movies, uh, um, J.I. Jane, the, you could say training or there are many training movies uh, in the United States film, film, film industry. Going to the Marines, and they give you a hellish time that you have to endure if you, if you want to be qualified. So we were treated each other, we were being treated very badly and we were treating each other uh, not so nice often. And there was already one of these particular, one guy who was from a very wealthy family. Most of us were very poor, talking about the 60s situation was <coughs> very, very harsh in Israel. We lived, uh, we were very poor, very, very poor country. Whatever we had went to buy um, army supplies. <laughs> this is the country but we lived on, uh, till the sixties, we lived on rations, which was very harsh. So, one of the guys, I used to give him a hard time. He was very wealthy and uh, from a rich family. We always have uh, rich people, and we, we used to abuse him, and I love to abuse him also. I was being abused, and I mean, it was a chain of uh, being, uh, everybody was uh, abusing, or we had all kinds of sex, it doesn't matter. I gave him out, uh, and uh, <clears throat> presumably after my surrender, Subaba, he picked up uh, this particular sanskar, and uh, brought it to my consciousness and uh, turned the fire on. And then I felt uh, that I have committed uh, the worst kind of sin in the, in the world. I came to the threshold of the highest of the highest of God and I lost it because I committed this uh, horrible sin. And uh, this idea 
was growing in my consciousness and uh, my brains were uh, sizzling. I was really it growing inside and I knew <coughs> that sooner or later I'm going to burn a fuse and I will go bankers uh, totally insane. And uh, this process was going on for three weeks. And it was going, getting stronger and stronger, hotter and hotter. And at the same time, I was doing my chores as a, in the police communication. I don't, it didn't affect my work. But I knew that inside myself, I'm uh, burning. It was a hot fire. It's not a physical fire. If you put a thermometer, you wouldn't know anything. It was in, internal. I'm sitting outside in the garden and Sometimes we might be noisy when there's somebody turn on his uh, motorcycle. Uh, but uh, it will be just for a minute. It will be longer than I will have to go inside. Or well, unless it doesn't disturb me. Then what happened one day, I was traveling from uh, Jerusalem to my hometown where I was born. In, it's 15 uh, kilometers or so north of Tel Aviv. And... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, this boy lived off the coast, uh, north, also north of uh, Tel Aviv, in the, the city of Herzliya, <clears throat> which he was on my way. And when I got to Herzliya, I got off the bus because I had to get a connecting bus to my hometown. And as soon as the bus stopped, the bus stopped, and the door opened. And as soon as the door opened, this particular boy was sitting there exactly in front of the door, not, a, not an inch to the right, not an inch. And we, I got off the bus looking direct into his eyes. <clears throat> and I was sitting next to him. I of course, was completely astonished because uh, such a coincidence never happened before. He, he, this was not his place, was not his station. Was, he, he, he had nothing to do with it. So we were sitting together for a... Uh, a while till my bus came to take me to the other place. And when I got there, the whole, the whole thing just vanished. It never came back. All this, this fire, the whole thing disappeared as if nothing happened. And this particular issue never bothered me again. So that was the first incident I experienced as a wiping off of some scars. Of course, I didn't know anything about Saskars at that time. This I understood the, during the 80s, late, many years later, when I was uh, translating the discourses into Hebrew, we started to study Saskars with Saskars. And uh, such situations kept on coming again, 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 many times. But the, but the more it the, came, the I started to slowly to understand by experience that uh, Baba is doing something, he's doing some work. And another uh, thing which happened to me at that time, those days, more or less the, the same time frame, let's say just uh, two, three months uh, after uh, Baba came to me. One day I had uh, this kind of vision, the internal mental vision, that I'm seeing a, a tremendous giant standing on the earth. I could see only legs and the rest of uh, the body disappeared in the heavens. So this magnificent uh, being holding the entire universe on its uh, shoulders. And I looked at him, this being uh, holding who knows how many tons, zillions and zillions, endless tons, <clears throat> and how much I can hold. I looked at myself, how can I lift one gram? The minimum that a person can handle it spiritually. Well, I didn't have any, I was, I, I had nothing to do with spirituality. It was even not a zero spirituality, in spirituality. Then I became, a, the second thought which crossed my mind, I became extremely worried about this giant. I said to myself, just imagine that my one gram will be the last straw on the giant's back. Because if, if I'm not handling my little gram properly, this will cause a big giant to crash and the whole universe will collapse. That's the thought I got into my mind. I became extremely worried, not about myself, but 
for the, this uh, child, this spiritual uh, child. So <clears throat> then I started to <laughs> take steps to become uh, what we would call today spiritually dependent, which took uh, many, many years, which actually never came, never comes to it. It's a life solution. Because uh, if you manage to lift you one gram, then uh, try to lift two grams and more. And one day I started to uh, feel more comfortable as I told myself, they will start to take some of the weight for the child on myself to reduce his uh, burden. Take me some, something for me. So this uh, presumably all these situations constituted this kind of, uh, I believe, this really special relations with Baba. So, you know, I don't know why they turn on the, this uh, motorcycle is such now. You hear it? No, I, I, you're coming through very clearly. I'm coming. You hear me? Okay, they're driving on. Otherwise, yeah. it's very quiet. My neighborhood is a mixed neighborhood. We Jews and Arabs live next to each other. In the same apartment building, you see a Jewish name, Arab name, a Jewish name. It's all mixed up. This particular neighborhood is, is uh, totally mixed. And we live, uh, no, no problem. There are no problems here. <laughs> I bought, uh, I, we lived many years in Jerusalem. Uh, and 13 years ago, I decided to buy something uh, in Israel. An apartment somewhere. I didn't know where. I searched all over Israel, and uh, there were kind of uh, rings within. Uh, I became concentrated eventually on Haifa, and eventually I got to this neighborhood, and I found some uh, desolated uh, Arabic house from the 30s, and I bought it eventually. And uh, <clears throat> five years ago, my wife uh, decided that we are moving to Haifa, so we moved to. So we are staying here the past uh, five years. And uh, it's okay. A small apartment, uh, have a large garden. I'm sitting now in our garden. And uh, it's okay. <coughs> Sanskaras. Now what, what we can do, if you want to comment something, you want to say something, ask me questions uh, too late. Elucidate to make things clear, please ask, and uh, I'll do my best to answer. And I can well, get a uh, yes, I was just going to say people can raise their hands if they want to participate or ask. Would that make it okay to do it that way? Yes, if somebody will uh, raise his hand, I will, uh, I will, uh, I will share with him whatever they want to share. No problem, of course. Issue would be more of uh, <clears throat> we share together, but I can uh, keep on uh, telling your stories as much as you want. I have no lack of uh, as many stories as you want. And whatever I can share, with, uh, I'm, I made a list of all kinds of things which I can share with you, but I speak uh, spontaneously of, uh, whatever comes to my mind, I will really share with you. Sanskar, Sanskar, Sanskar. <clears throat> Sounds good. Baba was teaching me what's the sanskar. This is the main topic tonight, sanskars. How he was he's teaching without telling you what it is. Now that's the way it goes with me. You go through a cycle. By the end of the cycle, you will understand why you entered the that cycle. I'm talking about the 70s and 80s. I was a fighter in the Israeli army who are being recruit, recruited by law. And there are no ifs and buts. You cannot choose a, a very small leeway by law. You have to go. In Israel, we don't shoot deserters like in Britain or United States or Germany or Russia. <clears throat> People refuse to go. Either they go to jail, they put them to jail for a little bit. We don't want to do this. It's a small country. 
And there's, there's, there's people who don't want to serve in the army, they, they are good for nothing. You cannot trust them in battle. They are not reliable. They're weak and they're afraid. They are good for nothing anyway. And uh, <clears throat> I learned that uh, the army is one of, at, at this particular situation of humanity, <clears throat> this is a training of Baba gave me. And what I'm telling you, Baba, Baba trained me through his army service. So this is unfortunately the situation at the moment for humanity that uh, <clears throat> we cannot uh, undergo a real spiritual training and, and the minimum spiritual training that we do in the army, the Baba speaks about this, that uh, when a human being goes to protect his motherland and gets killed, this is a spiritual victory. He said it very obviously. And he said other things that during war, <clears throat> we are being forced to become ingenious. We have to protect, uh, uh, <clears throat> create means to save ourselves in the motherland that during what we call peace, we are comfortable and we don't care. It brings a tremendous pressure on the human uh, psyche to survive and to generate things which otherwise we won't do. Of course, the Lord knows nobody dies. Baba said nobody dies, nobody suffers. It's only an illusion. But within this illusion, what was a disillusion does all this creation is, is illusory. This, uh, today I'm, uh, <clears throat> I know it, I live it, it's a disillusion. Uh, and uh, each time people are crying, oh, no, look at this, there is a war, and the people are dying. I say, nobody is dying. Nothing is happening. This is just a kaleidoscope. You know, you, you know what is kaleidos kaleidoscope. You rotate this uh, cylinder with a fraction of uh, pixels inside. All what you see, you look at the tele, you look at this plastic uh, screen, and you see all these pixels moving. You say, oh, look at those pixels. Oh, what a nice pixel. Oh, terrible pixel, nice pixel. And I look at all these humans. How do you know what's going on at all? You're not there at all. And if you're there, how do you know what's really going on? <laughs> how do you know? It's all inside us. What do you see? You see me where? On the screen? No, you don't see me on the screen. Where do you see me? inside your mind. You see me because I'm inside you and you inside me, that's why we see each other. You don't see me on this plastic screen. This is the illusion. We are one. And when you say this is people say, well, what are you talking about? This, this is strange stuff. But if you really look at this deep, you see that this is the truth about the whole thing. So all about this, and this you see, the whole world is uh, engrossed with all these fears, and actually hundreds of wars are raging all over the planet. Endless wars. Everybody is fighting with everybody. Everybody is pushing everybody. You don't have one square meter on the planet where people are not uh, <laughs> banging at each other. During, especially during peace. Wars during peace. <laughs> during war, at least as if now Israel became united supposedly because. We got this threat of uh, anni annihilation. So our kind neighbors uh, decided to exterminate us. And then we, we became also united after all year of uh, demonstrations and riots, uh, political things. I didn't participate uh, with all this, of course, not only because of Mehra's orders, but because uh, I didn't. I don't know what's going on with this. I don't care all these things. This is not my work. <clears throat> So the work of uh, learning what some scars are. <clears throat> During the war of 73, uh, I received a few uh, very strong uh, insights. <clears throat> and these uh, insights were, uh, I think because of uh, this uh, nature of surrenderance that allowed uh, Baba to feel comfortable uh, to give me orders and instructions, he presumably I could, I could take it no matter what. And uh, <clears throat> the insights uh, during the this war of seventy three was quite a serious thing. It was uh, equivalent what happened to Israel in October. Everything was uh, fell in shambles. We, we were taken by surprise. We 
there was too much vanity and corruption in the country. And then uh, I go to the war, <clears throat> it was 73, Baba came to me 72, it was just a year. Within a year, I, I had to come to some mi minimum situation of, so that I can understand what Baba wants with everything. So I can absorb all these insights. And the, the idea was that I'm responsible for that war. I created the war. I'm just a guy. I, mean, I was hardly a, a corporal in the army, the, you know, the two stripes, hardly. And I didn't like it in all. What? I'm not a general, I'm not a politician. What did I do? I didn't do anything. I'm just, I'm just living there. No, you're responsible. And here is a way uh, to find a way to rectify the situation, to amend it. You caused it. And then I understand. Who knows what I have done the past 10,000 years? I was born. Uh, who knows what I have done? All of us, we don't know. Thank heavens we don't know. <laughs> thank, we should thank heavens so we don't know anything. It's better for us. But he gave me a glimpse, the hospital. He didn't tell me, hey boy, you did this and this and this and this. No, you're responsible. You are the cause, all of us. <clears throat> and this is what I'm trying to share. I share from sometimes with the people of the community, the Babalars and others. And then tell them, and they complain, what's going on here? And then I give them saying, you are responsible. You, you did it. He said, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything. He said, I don't continue because they, they, they cannot take such responsibility that we are responsible for this world, the creation. They, we, we did everything, but we, it's hidden from our eyes. Then you have to awake. And if you don't understand it, we cannot heal it. There is no way, if you don't understand that we are responsible, we created this mess, we created the wars, we created the suffering. If you are not aware, if you don't understand it, <clears throat> there will not be any restoration for humanity. Because what they are doing, they're blaming each other. You are you're the good guys, you are the bad guys. I'm the good guy, of course, and you are the bad guy. I didn't do anything wrong to you, you did. But who knows what we did uh, in the former incarnation? It was vice versa. Maybe I did the bad things, and he was a victim, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We know the law of karma, give and take, uh, action and, and uh, counteraction, um, and how to stop is to take responsibility, whether you did it or not. It doesn't matter. And how to solve the problem and the next insight, which came at the same time, under the fire, under the bombardment. You understand? I was, I was in the world. And there were, <clears throat> bombs falling, bombs falling around you, and your insides are all hell, and you get these messages from uh, the Lord. This, this just, just to, to uh, understand, I was not sitting in a in a coffee house or say, on, on the beach. The bombs were falling, you know, fifty kilograms of the, what you call TNT. For the kilometer from you, the whole thing goes like this, the whole uh, wherever you see. It's unbelievable what humans are doing to each other. And it's non-stop all the time, all day, day and night. Boom, 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 boom. And it's how to restore it. The way to restore it is that a group of people who are centered, they have spiritual centering in, the, in God and the Divine Beloved, will learn how to work together with harmony. This came to me that day. And which is actually what Baba later on speaks about spiritual circles. And I've tried a few times um, to find people to share. I started to search for people in Israel to search, search for people with whom I can do something because there were no Baba Lars. Kerry had the uh, in the 60s, three centers in Israel. And when I came to 72, there was nothing. Not a single person besides myself and Carol, who shared about it. So I was working with the Rudolf Steiner group for a while. It didn't work out. It didn't get along. It doesn't matter. And then uh, Baba instructed me, which was uh, quite unusual, 
I got an address in my mind that I have to go to some particular place. I got the address. Not by letter, but by uh, insight. Go to this, you have to go the, here and there, and uh, there you will meet uh, some people. So I go, I went, I obeyed the, this impulse. It was an impulse. And I came to some uh, group of people who came to Israel from the United States, some Jewish people. And the, there was some uh, ministry in the United States, probably from the 30s, also dedicated mainly for re-establishing the spiritual circles on earth under the <clears throat> directives of the Divine Beloved, which is uh, Jesus. And it was not a sp religious group. It was a spiritual, one of the many endless spiritual organizations on the planet. And their dedication was uh, to <clears throat> form a group of people who are working together with uh, Harmony. So I joined this group for a while. And I had uh, some uh, <clears throat> objections and objections. I was not comfortable with the whole thing. Something didn't feel right to me about this and that, whatever it is. But uh, <clears throat> Since I follow Barbara's orders, I was ordered to stay in this group willy-nilly, whether I like it or not. Papa uh, gave me a very severe order about this. Come out now, you stay there, come out now, you don't go out, because I'm kind of uh, sometimes uh, used to be, how you call it, <clears throat> short-tempered, <laughs> redhead. Used to, I can, uh, I some, I didn't do it, but if I had to, I, I had no problem to say even the high official what I think about him, whether he put me in jail or not. I, I didn't do it so, so much, but I had uh, this. Uh, but over the years, uh, he stopped affecting me. I got out of it by 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 grace. I'm not doing such things anymore. Already for a long time. So I spent some time with this group and the. Uh, the whole thing went uh, berserk, uh, berserk. It, it, it was corrupted. It took advantage of the people, the, the, took the embezzled money. It, it went crazy, the whole thing. And it uh, eventually it exploded and uh, I participated in the process of uh, destroying it because I realized that this is, uh, needs to be destroyed. and. Uh, took responsibility, I did whatever I did, and uh, he made a whole big mess worldwide of all this worldwide organization, etc. doesn't matter the name, we're not going to mention it. It doesn't matter. Because uh, you will see later what was the point. The point was when the whole thing was over, I was uh, deeply emo emotionally involved. I was uh, emotionally and mentally in uh, some kind of uh, mental state. I didn't you know how to get out of it. I was enmeshed with the whole thing, like a, a fly in a spider web. And I couldn't get out of it. And I tried to make a few exercises uh, to become uh, free. I didn't succeed. And I kept on trying and trying for a while, maybe a few weeks, a few months. Then Baba stepped in. Then he started to give me instructions what to do. I guess you are doing it in a, each one of you in a way. By that time, 76, I know nothing. <laughs> and I have nobody to talk to and nobody to advise. <clears throat> and that's what he instructed me to do. And this is the beginning of working on Sanskars because I was dealing with Sanskar, of course I didn't know this is a, Binding impression. I was bound by impression, but I was bound by impression that Baba caused. He ordered me to do something and I did it and I got a, a, emotionally and mentally a, in a serious uh, binding situation which I didn't know how to get out of it. So, only uh, and that's the way Baba worked. He puts you into circumstances. I didn't understand why 
Why put me in this circumstance? Only when I got out of that circumstance many years later, I understood why he put me there, so I will learn how to get out of such circumstances. He doesn't sit you like in, in a school and give you uh, all kind of, you go to, uh, you learn uh, psychology. They teach you theories, but this wasn't a theory, it was actual practice. You're getting to a mental and emotional uh, uh, turmoil, upheavals, and uh, how to cure it. And he did. As if you could zip my brains uh, a few years before that, just like this, he could do everything. He can do everything. So I started to walk, but this this time it took a very long time, not an instant like before. Started to to do a walk, and the the instruction was like this: whatever comes first to your mind, walk with it. So I started to walk with this. I took a father and mother. The two started to work on the people who were closest to me and feel what you feel about them. So of course, it became a very difficult, complicated situation. My folks were uh, Holocaust survivors. So they managed to escape you, all their parents. Everybody perishes and we knew what happened because we, a few survivors came and told what happened. And, and uh, we live in Israel and uh, all the time, our uh, kind neighbors uh, shooting at us. We, during the night, you would hear uh, gunshots. We were not so far from the border. And uh, <clears throat> very, very tough, very intense situation. Very disturbed. We, all of us were extremely disturbed. There was no peace for a second. Do you know what it's going to be in the next moment? So I had to walk, and, and of course, there were lots, lots of heavy emotions and feelings towards uh, towards everybody and everything. So I was walking, let's say, one father or mother, and he, till everything got cleared, he told me, you take the situation, take father, take father, put it in an envelope, mail it to me. <laughs> Something like this. And it disturbs you 50 times a day, send me 50 times a day letters. Send me as many letters to me, as many as you want, no problem. So I was working on this, started to work on this systematically. And uh, it took me about 15 years till I, from 76 till 91. 91, I started to understand what's, what's going on, what I'm doing. Because things started to get clear. There was one particular sanskara, and of course I was working father, mother, uh, brother, friends, uh, people from uh, the surrounding people. I started to circles within circles, started to go touch everybody. And of course I was touching at a certain stage later on, Jewish people and the Arab people. I was dealing with all these sanskars. I was, I, I slowly understood the, over the years that I'm absorbing sanskars from the world and I give it to, the, to God. It became uh, disunderstood uh, only 20 years after I started to work. That actually I set sanskar from the world and I give it to Baba so he could clear it. I, I cannot do anything. I cannot clear some scars. We cannot do it. If somebody here thinks that he can, maybe he can. I, I don't believe it. We can. <clears throat> that is three possibilities of, of clearing some scars by the avatar, by the perfect masses, or by the spiritual circles. It's our responsibility to create the spiritual circles. And Baba gave me, at that time, while I got involved with the group, Group which is dedicated to reconstruct the spiritual circles of Wales, which Master Moses decides. The whole mission of Master Moses was to recreate the spiritual circles. We'll work with harmony as a group of spiritual people, focus on the divine beloved, on Yahweh at that time, or whatever name you take, this is not the issue. Each uh, 
Advent, the name is 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 particular for the people with whom uh, this uh, Advent is dedicated to. And one thing which uh, I didn't say when Baba came to me, before that I didn't want to study anything. I didn't study anything in school. They couldn't, couldn't they got kind of a guy that nobody can teach me in school. I don't have any patience, I fall asleep. I, I, I simply, I don't listen to lectures. Then I, I started to study music. And before that, I didn't have an inclination whatsoever for music. And uh, I did quite a good progress. Of course, I was very old, 22, 23. This usually should start uh, much earlier, but I did, they asked me when I was a boy if I want to study music. I didn't want to study music. I didn't want to study anything. <clears throat> And only after 40 years of study, I keep on studying till now. I've realized when I joined, the, I studied the flute, I studied the piano a few years, I studied how to play the piano. I was a beginner. I play the piano still now, but it's just for fun. But my main instrument was the, the flute. I was playing in Merabad many times in the, during the Archie times. I love to play the, the, the Gujarati Arti. I used to play the, in the morning artists. <clears throat> but what I learned, especially as, after I started to join a, a wind bands uh, 10 years ago or more than this, and started to realize that a wind band is the only situation on earth that a group of human beings come together work together with uh, absolute discipline and uh, they have to accept each other. They cannot, uh, if you know how to play, then you know how to play. They don't uh, think if you like it, you like you, don't like you, and you have to obey the conductor or the conductors. It's the only situation when people are doing it is love. And uh, we all admire all the time, all the groups I went, a few wind bands over the years. We all admire the conductors, they are exceptional human beings, and we obey them. And this is the only situation on earth. The people obey the point of focus, and they do whatever is telling, otherwise there's no music, it's not going to work. It doesn't matter if he's right or wrong, but he will bring the music, he knows how to do it. And this is a, <clears throat> a faint, image of what spiritual circle is. In spiritual circles, all the participants are doing voluntarily with love and they obey the master, the, which is the conductor is a master and they obey him with love and they're willing to die for it. But this is a much higher stage of awareness. Of course, no musical band on earth aware that they imitate in a way the spiritual circle. And this is maybe the reason why we have so many gifted uh, musicians in this community. But still in this community, we don't have one single active spiritual circle to my knowledge. I don't know. Still, I don't know. <clears throat> in the Mandali, we are a spiritual circle under, under the directives of the avatar. But uh, where is the second ring of uh, circle? Uh, where is my circle? I don't know. What about you? I have no idea. Maybe you have maybe done it. I have no idea. I think that it doesn't exist in this Bible world. How can redeem humanity with what is this situation with spiritual soul? And this all continuing with the discussion on sanskars. These are basics to understand how to erase sanskars. Now we're dealing how to the we humans will create the mechanism to erase some scars. Baba is speaking about this a little bit. <clears throat> there are many things he didn't say, we couldn't say, or not always the Mandalay were uh, getting along so well with each other. We know it, some of it, there were problems. Sometimes they were fighting with each other. Sometimes Baba said, 
you, all of you go away from here. I don't need any one of you. But they were, you know, they were real heroes and they were, they were willing to, uh, to take anything just to stay with him. But today, unfortunately, we don't have a spiritual circus, at least I don't know. A group of people working together under the directive of a conductor. Somebody must say, you cannot uh, have a, a group of uh, musicians without conductors because somebody has to bring everything to balance. He has to be standing externally and see all the sounds and he puts it together. And he teaches us, direct, directs us, brings us, put us together. It could be 40 people sitting, uh, will sit in a circle. They are not going to make it. We know it. Doesn't matter how uh, well educated, advanced we are. At a certain stage, if you are well educated, well trained, and the conductor or conductors are not available, we will play quite well. We have done it not, not once. <clears throat> now, what's, happen what's happening with the spiritual circle, which is this? The closest simile is a, is a band, a musical band. If I'm a soloist, I play uh, the flute. To get to there, I'm playing the bassoon. I can play my part, as, uh, let's say, as best as possible, but I can, cannot play along the whole symphony. I need uh, 30, 40, 50 people more. And each one has to play his role perfectly. And then we get the entire picture. And when we have this entire picture, <clears throat> what becomes is a group state of consciousness, which is uh, larger and greater than uh, the individual. This is a symphony. This is a song which a group create. Then when a group is working with harmony, we create a, a state of mind, a, a spiritual state, which one person cannot have, cannot create by himself. And somewhere I understood, maybe Baba is saying it or not, that if we'll take all the entire humanity, everybody will walk like perfectly together like a switch a clock with perfect harmony, all of humanity, this will be created one state, spiritual state of a perfect master. So in term humanity is equivalent to one perfect master. So in order that we humans will be able to bring humanity back to balance and uh, erase all these <clears throat> tremendous unnatural scars everywhere, all this destructiveness, we would need to create a, a spiritual mechanism that will learn, will, uh, will know how to erase these scars. As I have been doing uh, personally, I'm erasing some scars. I'm not erasing some, but I give it to Baba. So here is a question. Hey, why have to give it to him? He is there, he is everywhere. Why cannot do it? So here is the answer I got from him. I cannot uh, interfere. I'm, I'm speaking on his behalf, as I understood. I cannot uh, interfere with somebody's, any person without him introducing me to his life. If, if a person is not surrendering to me, I cannot help him. I, I do, I'm not going to violate uh, the <clears throat> independence and the free will of a person unless he is asking for it. If he wants me to help him, I will be glad to help everybody. We know it. We, we, we learned the life of the, of the avatar and, and perfect masters are anxious and willing to help us. If we come to them with the right attitude, if we if you don't surrender, if you surrender with a motive, well, I'll surrender to you because I want a, a pretty wife or a pretty husband. Uh, I want to be rich and I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. That's forget it. This, this, uh, this, I uh, call it the kindergarten stage. You cannot approach a, a, a God perfect master with all these uh, mundane questions. And maybe he gave me all these answers, not because I didn't want anything from him. I wanted to, to help him. I wanted to, to, to remove the burden from him. I was worried about him and not myself. Maybe that's why he gave me this turn. I simply don't see any, he didn't say. 
He didn't tell me why he was doing it, but uh, in, I understand that the pursuit, that's why, why is it? Because I gave him the leeway. I invited him uh, to train me. I opened the door for him without any expectation. Of course, there were expectations, I'm human being, and you, you want this, but there was nothing spiritual. I never had any spiritual expect expectation, never asked him, eh, I will see your uh, universal face, when I will be God realized, or maybe give me uh, liberation. It's never, I don't know what all these things, I'm not interested with uh, God realization, liberation. Once I wrote to, uh, I was dealing a lot with Don Stevens because I was doing a Hebrew translations uh, from 84. <clears throat> the trust transferred me to Don Stevens, so he, he will supervise my work. And once I wrote him in a letter, it's buried somewhere in my archive. <clears throat> I've realized the mayor Baba is the avatar, the highest of the high, and I never want to be liberated from him. <laughs> you tell me what else there is. You want to be liberated from what? People were in this community hoping for liberation, so we'll, uh, we'll escape this uh, sphere of things, they'll so go out, everything will be nice and rosy, we'll sit somewhere in the heavens, no, <clears throat> no suffering, no burden. I don't know, if I serve my Lord, I will keep on serving him, and I will, and I will do whatever he needs to be done, whatever in this sphere, other sphere. Well, why do I care? I don't care. You no, know, if you give me more opportunities of service, then uh, what's there is for me to ask? Well, what is God realized? It's like the general in the army of the Lord. He has plenty of generals. He is, is a, a very short, <clears throat> there is a tremendous shortage of the corporals and the sergeants. So the people to do the chores, this is a tremendous shortage. No, no, no problem with generals. There are plenty of generals in the spiritual hierarchy. <laughs> That's what I understand. <clears throat> okay, you want more stories? Where else do you want to get? I can continue. I wish. wonder if anybody has a question or a comment they'd like to bring forth now. Just giving that opportunity. I I just want to say, Atiana, I'm I'm glad you're coming and sharing. And uh, of course, it was just like wonderful music to my ears to to uh, you tell about Mara rushing to the door and saying, "Why don't you take Darsha?" <laughs> that was so beautiful, uh, you know. I I, I just love Mara, so mm. uh, you know. To me, she's a female side of God, so. Yeah, I wrote uh, stories in my, on my website. There are stories I wrote for Baba, and there are stories about Mera and her role in the spiritual hierarchy. And you can read it if, if so you wish. You can enter my website, zemerbabaisrael.com. Uh, in, in English, in English for in me. In English, in English. Yeah. There is okay. an English section, and you can read my Baba stories. One of them, uh, I think I called it Mera's Cake. There was a, <laughs> they were making a, a funny story. So it was very funny. I wrote it, I published it at that time in the, remember the Baba Talk List, which uh -huh. was in the beginning of the 2000s or before the 2000s. Eventually they evaporated. <clears throat> the, the good Baba lovers were uh, <laughs> couldn't stop uh, <laughs> bashing and fighting with each other. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Non-stop uh, uh, internet wars. I was but sitting there was and looking a, at... You're speaking of a cake, a cake that you eat, a cake? Cake? Mera's cake, I think I call Mera's it Mera's cake. cake. And uh, the, cake the last eating. story I wrote, cake, so, yeah. <clears throat> Can you tell it now? I, the gist of it that uh, I'm being called to the heavens uh, because uh, Baba wants uh, me, they, they decided the gods, the council of the gods, decided they wanted to give me God realization. 
And here is there is a once in a while, there is a, a birthday of Mera when the, the person who is God realized or something like this, he is sharing, a, Mera is bringing a cake to the whole uh, congregation of the Lords in heaven. <laughs> <clears throat> and there's a person who earns a cake supposed to take a slice and share it with the gods. And I'm coming to this uh, situation. The, this is a skit, you can see it. It's quite, an, and I said to Baba, uh, ah, no, don't give it to me. I'm not interested with God realization. What is the Baba Lavas going to say? Now that I'm doing all this work because I'm God realizers and I don't make mistakes and think uh, then they will refuse to do anything. It's going on and on and on. And the Baba, everybody is dismayed. It never happens that somebody comes to deserve God relation, he refuses to have it. And what Baba is getting uh, upset. Well, we, we want to eat the cake. Somebody has to eat the cake. <laughs> now, what happened? I wrote it at that time. I wrote a skit for Kendra, Kendra Corson. What happened? <laughs> Just see how, how things happen. At that time, Kendra lost her uh, favorite uh, dog. Her dog died, and she was very sad and very upset. So actually I wrote the whole skit from Kendra to make her uh, happy. So what's happening? That her dog passed away and the dog managed to sneak inside the congregation of the Lord of Lords, which is usually <coughs> strictly forbidden. Well, the dog, is kind of a beautiful dog, charming dog. The, 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 the gatekeeper couldn't resist the charm of the dog and let her in. And the dog <laughs> jumps on the table and eats a mayor's cake. <laughs> <laughs> so the dog became dog realized. <laughs> <laughs> so I was telling Baba such stories. And you were laughing, so he was laughing. And each time Baba was laughing, you see, for me, for my person, to make Baba laugh is the highest achievement in the universe. I don't see anything else. The rest, I don't know what to see. <laughs> so this is our purpose. Beautiful. Our purpose is to make him laugh. And not the crowd. Yeah. That humanity made the, his life into hell. He comes in suffering so much. Yeah. We, uh, we were supposed to uh, make a fun fun of creation, we turned it into hell. We did it, we did it. <laughs> and he wants to, he comes again, again, trying to give us a hand to get out of all this insanity, come back to your senses. There's no need for this. He said, <clears throat> there's a need only for 1% of suffering. Suffering is needed for the forging of the soul, but not, not this in, in, insanity. But which is going on everywhere, it's everywhere, the whole human race. Don't put a finger at uh, this nation or that nation, it's everybody. It's the whole, the whole of all humanity is a problem. Yeah. Everybody also, we don't have any spiritual leadership. Nobody understands anything. We listen to the news. <clears throat> I listen to the news. <laughs> ah. to the, the various leaders. In Israel and abroad, nobody understands understands anything whatsoever what's going on. The philosophers, I'm listening uh, on YouTube, uh, and also uh, and I know some of we have great uh, <clears throat> luminaries in Israel. The first line of uh, professor of, of all kinds you can think of. Uh, philosophy, spirituality, the history, Bible, <clears throat> nobody knows, nobody has uh, any sense whatsoever about the truth, nobody. And they waving their hands, we know what to do, and this and that, nobody knows anything. You listen to the media, our charming Amanpu and other uh, <clears throat> people who are speaking, they don't know what's going on. The United States doesn't understand anything whatsoever, what's going on in the Middle East. All what they do is just creating moments and moments. And the, <laughs> the 
the Arabs don't know what's going on, the Israelis don't know what's going on, nobody knows what's going on. That, that's it, it's the truth. Nobody knows. Everybody wants uh, to make something out, they're trying to find, they don't understand the solution is spiritual and not uh, physical. <clears throat> Borders, we don't, we humans, we don't have any right to, to draw lines on the face of uh, our mother. The planet is our mother. She gave birth to us, and we decided this is mine, this is mine. Nothing is ours. <laughs> if you say this is mine, this is mine, nothing is ours. Well, we have created the, the planet. We have created the sun. The sun is the father, and the, and the earth is the mother. And we supposed to take care of the, the garden. This is our duty, not to take advantage of it, uh, to till in uh, the ground, uh, to to enhance uh, everything, the, all the worlds. And we just think about ourselves. You speaking about uh, the poleness of humanity. What about the poleness of the mineral kingdoms, the vegetable kingdoms, the animal? What about them? Nobody speaks about this, even the, the spiritual, why nobody's complaining about the fate of the mineral? Do you know what's going on? How they suffer? They suffer. The whole creation is suffering because of humanity. Because we blocked the way to go to the goal. We, we humanity, <clears throat> create a clog, a blockage. Humanity is suffering from a uh, how you call it? <laughs> we cannot uh, make a stool. No, how, you, how you call this? Constipation. Const we suffer constipation. from chronic constipation, <laughs> a spiritual constipation. Yeah. The, the, the sanskars, the, the, the black, bad sanskars, are increasing all the time instead of this decreasing. And we, humanity, is supposed to adjust the sanskaric makeup of the entire creation. We, we do this, we don't know, we, we talk to people, we don't know, talking to Baba Lavas, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm not talking about this at all. If I say it, because Baba trained me to do this, not because I understood, because I read, I read the discourses, I read the discourses uh, dozens of times, because I had to do it. But the understanding didn't come from reading. Reading uh, gave it a different uh, depth, that's true. Maybe if you want to continue this session or such sessions, we will get the, into Maybe some of them. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Another yeah. hour. I was just going to say, maybe we can schedule another time, Etzion, for another make it, hour. Make it more I, I, have, organized. I have an idea, Etzion. Okay. I, I think it would be beneficial. There's much open space on this Baba Zoom. Uh, if if you could just have a time and then if people had a question or, you know, they could come because I could think of so many people that would have benefited to be here today. I know. I know. Uh, it's I so, I so interesting. <clears throat> so, but if you have a, a time, a slot, an hour, people come come in, you know, and 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 that way you could share, because, uh, you know, those of us that came today, all women. There should be men here, <laughs> you know. It's like it, I know I I will tell these men, you know. Um, Anyway, I think it's worth considering, Etienne, to, to have an hour convenient to you and that convenient to U.S. Because Baba no. did say that uh, America would uh, be a spiritual, would lead spiritually. But he says first it will have to be awakened. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm sitting here in America and you know, I you know we need help. So whatever part you can give, Baba has given you 
you know, I mean, how many people did Baba give the grace of Mara rushing in and say, won't you take Darshan? I mean, oh, it's, it's such a blessing, this beautiful soul, Mara, Mara, yeah. Whenever I came and if she was available on the short porch, I was on the porch, <clears throat> you know, and uh, uh, it was such a grace, such a grace, you know, just that, that you know kind. You know what I used to say? Yeah. About, but... about you, you ladies <clears throat> made the most clever decision to take a female form so you yeah. can sit and have a tea with male. Oh, I knew you, that. I tell you <clears throat> that you don't have any idea of the I magnitude know. of the spiritual boon you have received. I'm telling yeah. you like this, I, I wrote it in my skits. Nobody in the universe, the greatest powers in the, in the universe. You see, for us, it takes 10, 20,000 years to create a hammer or a wheel. How long it took us to do something? Are you dealing with spiritual beings, they think a whole universe is being created just like this in an instant from the very minutest thing to the top in an instant. They are not allowed to have a tea with Mera. And we would be willing to lose all the spiritual status yeah. to take a female form and to have tea with Mera. Yeah. It's just to tell you the role of Mera. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can speak about the role of Baba in the midst of all the I was trying to share in my stories the role of this. <clears throat> his spiritual status is much, much higher than what he said and what the masses said. What, what you can say is that he is the sum total of, the, of all the perfect masters combined. Yeah. Can you figure out a, such a, a spiritual state? This is unbelievable. And such mm. a being wants to help us. Not only to help us, he wants us to be with him, to join him. And I should have uh, said, <clears throat> I eventually got insights for us, whatever it is, this situation, maybe I will uh, say it, it came to my mind, so I should uh, mention it. Like every, I was doing this kind of work of uh, working with Sanskars, it's uh, explained this work I uh, think it's on my website, Heart Realm Maintenance. Actually, inside myself, I created the sky with the sun, and the sky, the earth, the, the world, on this, on the world, on earth. I built a, <clears throat> I call it a, a, a tabernacle. Where you sacrifice the animals. An altar? Altar. An altar. altar. And yeah. on this altar, I was sacrificing the sanskars. Um. I was focusing the rays of the sun on the mm -hmm. altar and burning the the animal. I was taking a sanskar in the form of an animal, a beast. Yeah. That's why they were doing it in the temple. That's why they were doing all these sacrifices. They were sacrificing the scars, but, but uh, <clears throat> these people don't understand. Uh -huh. And uh, my work was, uh, Baba directed me that uh, I should eliminate all forms of hatred towards no one, anyone. I don't accept any grudges, any hatreds in my uh, uh, circle, in my aura. And after many years of work, <clears throat> for every 10 years, I would receive an insight or two. Something. It's a, <laughs> I call it payment. <laughs> you know, right. but it's, but it's, to board your way uh, and conscience and understanding. And uh, eventually, <clears throat> what came to me is that uh, 
He offered the, all of us, each one of us, the highest gift, which is what? To enter is the, the aura, the, the realm of perfect love, which is the realm of the avatar. And there is only one condition. And the condition is that you cannot keep any grudge whatsoever against anyone, no matter what. And if you come with one single grudge, you're being pushed out instantaneously. So if you come to this realm without any grudges, you enter this realm of perfect love and you stay there for keeps till the rest of the creation. And <clears throat> he has never given such a gift to humanity ever since the beginning of time. Because you get there only after finishing all this matriculation, you become a rich perfection. After perfection, there are more journeys. This is just the beginning of the real journey. Mm -hmm. When you reach the perfection, it's just the beginning of the real journeys, and there is no end to it. And he wants us to come to the very end as we are. He has never given such a boon, and people just take it uh, for granted in, uh, in losing the game. I can see it all the time. They're judging this, judging that. Oh, it's so bad. And, uh, it's very sad. This is one of the reasons I initiated this talk. Just focus on the avatar, focus on, don't uh, feel a search in your heart if you keep a grudge against someone. If you don't have any grudges, you will enter the sphere of perfect love and you stay there for kids. That's what I understood. And if you think about this and see that you cannot enter the sphere, the sphere of perfect love if, if you hate some, somebody in the universe. You hate Hitler, you don't like him, or whomsoever. Somebody did bad things to you. I'm not saying that somebody did bad, horrible things to me. I should love him, but I shouldn't hate him. We cannot love as Baba loves, unconditionally everything and everybody. Whether, like the Christ, Christ, if, if he would, at that time, if when they hanged him to the cross, if he would uh, curse humanity, all of us would be vanished instantaneously, all of us would be evaporated. And he accepted it, otherwise we wouldn't be here. So we cannot uh, share in his work a little bit. He forgave all of, us, all of us and he accepts us. And we, we, all of us, we stepped him, we crucified him. And we are doing it all the time. And he accepts us nevertheless. And we should, he wanted us just to make a little effort and to join him. Jay Baba Etzion, thank you so much. I think we'll talk to you about maybe setting up another hour somewhere, no. if that would be okay. As you wish, you're welcome. I, I like it, Etzion, when you says you can make Baba laugh. Because mm -hmm. I feel the same way for me when I met Mara, that I had the, I had the grace Baba gave me, I could make her laugh. And, it, and, and she told me that I was born to entertain. And I, it's just entertain Baba. And of course, Mara, oh, to entertain Mara. Wow, just, it was such a grace, just a grace. Uh, yeah, well, you have earned a wild bull to entertain Mara. Just imagine how much she was suffering. She gave us. Oh, I 20 know. years, he loaned Mera to us for 20 years. I know. Just think about uh -huh. it. It never happened before. How much he was suffering every day for uh -huh. the separation. Every day. Yeah. Just as to we'll, we'll have a glimpse of Mera. So you ladies will be with her. You, you don't, you, it's unbelievable. We don't understand this, the magnitude of this boom. Yeah. No, I, no, I was grateful to be in a female body. Totally, no. when I was You're the there. luckiest. <clears throat> he did. Yeah, you did the right deal. You made the right deal, all of you. I envy you. <laughs> and you know, I wanted the, while I was in Mehrabad in 1982, I was thinking, I'm a male. I uh, cannot touch Mehrabad, cannot, cannot come. 
So what shall I do? So I was playing before Mera with my flute. I improvised something uh, before the porch. I was standing there. Sometimes I like to make uh, to make improvis improvisations uh, just for fun. <clears throat> I made up something, and it was a wooden flute, mm. not a recorder. Uh, you know, a flute but made of wood. I found it uh, somewhere. It was not playing so well, but it was wood, and I'm a wood person. My name is actually Wood. It's it's his wood. <laughs> ah. ah. It's, it's the only is a small tree, <laughs> little tree. That's my um, my mother came up with. An evergreen, evergreen tree. No tree, small tree. Oh, anyway, tree. I was holding the flute. <laughs> After I finished uh, this piece, I was uh, making up. I took my flute. I was holding it with both hands. It's a long piece of a uh, tube, you know the flute which you play like this. My two hands were on the edges and I gave it to Mera. I came to oh, her oh. and I gave it to her and she put her two hands in the middle. So <laughs> for a second we were connected. <laughs> and everybody was shouting. <laughs> what do you mean? Mera knew. Mera knew. Mera knew. She knew, she knew, she knew the, Mera knew, she knew, Mera she knew. Yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's, really, it's really cool. <laughs> I am very new. Yeah. Yeah, she well, knew. That would be great to hear more of your stories about yeah. time. Uh, with and with Mary and Amandali that you yeah there are many stories I can yeah. tell you many stories yeah, plenty, of, plenty of interesting stories working with uh, Sanskaras with uh, Jews and Arabs lots of work was going on a lot of work a very yeah. great deal of work very silent work uh, I can talk about some of this <clears throat> I visited, <clears throat> I used to do construction. When Baba came to me, 70, from 73, I became, I left the police force and I started to work as an independent. I didn't have a clue about anything. I didn't know how to run a business. I no not understand much. I'm not a physical person and uh, I had nobody to study from. It was very difficult, but uh, from the 80s onwards, I was working uh, <clears throat> um, many years in what you call the West Bank. We don't mm -hmm. like to call it West Bank, it doesn't matter the name. But the eastern side of Israel, what do you, you call Palestine. I can get into all these things if you wish. And uh, I employed, uh, I used to do construction in the settlements, in the Jewish uh, settlements, and I needed uh, employees, I needed people. <clears throat> so I hired people from uh, the Arabic uh, villages around the neighborhood. And eventually, <clears throat> and I was, uh, the, by the end of the day, I was driving them back home, and they, we were sitting together in their home, and they taught me to speak Arabic, so we were getting together and speaking in Arabic on all kinds of issues. Uh, doesn't matter what. And I think I visited the Arabic homes a few thousands of times, over 20 years, between three to four thousand times, sitting in their homes. I don't think there are so many Israelis so uh, in refugee camps. I, my headquarters were in a refugee camp. <laughs> That's a cool story. I will tell you the story maybe. I have uh, lots of uh, interesting stories dealing with the mm -hmm. uh, Arabic sector, which uh, <clears throat> you cannot get it from uh, the news, news with the media. They don't know. I was sitting in the people's home and I sit inside your home and you are the host and I came uh, to dine with you. 
And when you come to an Arabic house, it is customary that uh, in the evening, I bring them uh, from day work. They, they are my employees. I'm sitting in the, at their home. And of course, we eat together. This is a basic uh, um, honoring uh, the host. If you don't uh, come, come to Arabic house and you say, I don't want to eat, it's a major insult. Very major, very big. And I would come each time. And uh, yes, you, of course, we were eating together. Then when I eat, we are eating together, we become a family. I really admire this uh, particular uh, habit of the Arabs. And their hospitality is uh, unparalleled. We Israelis are not like this. We are cold-hearted people. We are not like this. Definitely don't see such a thing in the States. I was working, I had employees in a refugee camp. And sometimes I didn't have a car and I had to go to, for my men. I had to walk, let's say, 300, 400 meters from the entrance to his uh, house. And in his house, he had a garage and all my equipment, my, my storage was there in, in the refugee camp. <laughs> and I would enter the, the camp. In the entrance, there was uh, our military our soldiers were sitting on the roof and they were shouting at me. Where are you going? Where are you going here? The refugee camp, a very bad, uh, dangerous place. Said, I'm coming to have a coffee. So, <laughs> by the way, I would get uh, to my man, walking 300 meters, I had to... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I had to drink at least three times coffees. People who said, come please have a coffee with us, in Arabic. Fadal, Ashrab Ahawe Man. We have a lot fear here, so. Speaking of, we spoke, speak Arabic sometimes together. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time we'd get there, you see, I, I was like a home. That's a bad place. Uh, people who, who were deported during the war of 48. It doesn't matter who is responsible, not responsible, who caused it, didn't cause it. That's a situation. It's a given. You don't blame anyone. And... Uh, if it can be solved, it can be solved. Uh, we can get into this if you want to have a Jewish uh, Muslim uh, conference or Israeli Arab conference. So I will tell you my insights in the world, what Baba taught me, not what I understand. Uh, I, of course, I made a lot of research and I studied uh, a lot. Uh, <clears throat> from our, we have top experts about the situation. We can get into the problems of uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, till now. What is behind all these advents, as I understood? There are a lot of material we can discuss. Yeah. All in good spirits, we had this evening was in very good spirits, it feels. We have created a good positive energy. And when we work together with concord and love, we help the world. We erase, we have erased some scars in this evening. We brought positive some scars, brought positive energy to the creation. We did some good work this evening. And we can uh, continue to do this. Okay, let's, go, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's um let's set another meeting and you can what? tell let's let's set a, a next time a meeting for you what? to go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Do. Let's yeah. say let's let's plan it. Let's have another meeting next time, another session, probably same Tuesday, if that's okay. And yes. you can tell more of the stories. Can you hear me okay? I'm fine. You're, you're doing very well. <clears throat> okay. I was going to say let's. Um, I think we may be coming to, you know, I'm having computer problems and I think Ruthie has an appointment. So it may, it's a good time, I think, today to, um, to you know, to, to close. But let's set another meeting and you can talk more about. The, and mm -hmm. I hope. Website. Yeah, uh, put his website too on, on uh, the chat so we know. It's the end, your website. MeherbabaIsrael.com. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I just think we could, should set a whole meeting on your talking yeah. about, about those stories about. Um, <clears throat> oh, I know. I was, 
I was I was kind of afraid of it, but it's looking pretty good. I think we need to hear your story. Oh yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <clears throat> we did Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Probably same time Tuesday. Um, we'll uh, we'll chat. We'll uh, communicate. Uh, email about what date is good for you. Yeah. Maybe next week. We'll see. Yeah. Sure. And thank you. And thank you, Etzion. I uh, yeah. You. I have a lot, a lot to share. And thank I think you, so I'm interested. Yeah. <clears throat>